hey there, good to see you again. It looks like, according to your chart, you are in because you're having a little bit of hearing loss. Okay. Oh, it's not a problem. Let me just start. I'm going to start right off here and take a look inside your ears to find out what the problem is. I have a good idea of what it is, but it's always good to check. Just going to use my otoscope here. Take a look in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like you have a little bit of an impaction. It's, it's not very bad, but it could definitely cause a little bit of hearing loss. Uh, let me check your other ear too. Mm, yeah, this ear too. This one's a little bit worse actually. You know, it's something I can take care of. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I can take care of it today. Um, let me start here by going over your chart really quickly. Uh, the normal, the normal procedure for cleaning out an impaction is to irrigate with water. But I do see that you've had a history of, um, of middle ear infections. Which, uh, yeah, it's not a very good idea to irrigate could cause um, an infection, obviously. So I think what we're going to do today is it's not a bad impaction. I think that I can do it with um, with a curette. It's just this little, essentially it's like a tiny little spoon. And I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to very, very, very gently scrape out the earwax and then we'll see where we are from there, okay? Okay. Let me look in here one more time. We'll start on your right ear. Okay. Yeah, this one should be a piece of cake for me. I've done this before. Don't worry about it. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to start with my with my curette. It's not scary at all. Just a tiny, tiny little spoon. I'm just going to go in there and we're going to see what we can do. Okay? Okay, great. at all, okay? It may be a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. I also have some forceps here. Help me get it out. Gotta make sure I have all my tools. Q-tips don't clean your ears, they just make things worse, right? Right. Ah, uh, you don't use it to clean them. Oh. Well, I gotta be perfectly honest. I used to. Um, I used to Q-tip my ears. Because it felt really good. Like scratching an itch. Really well. And the reason is, is because inside your ear, there are a huge density of nerves. Yeah, there's a lot more nerve endings inside your ear. And that's why it can feel really good when you cue dip. I mean, so I, I can, I know you understand that it doesn't clean, and it's not very good for your ear, especially that's why you have the ear, the hearing loss right now. Okay. Alright. Well, you know, as your doctor, all I can do is advise you not to do it. Yeah. Well, and it also, I mean, 
tippy dips aren't always. They're not always together completely, and I can tell you've been using them because they leave fibers behind in your ear, right? I've even had some patients that come in with some pretty bad hearing loss and they've lost like the entirety of the cotton swab, um, the cotton part in their ear. Yeah. Because it can get stuck to the wax and just come right off and you never even know. Yeah. This one's coming off really well though. I'm a little worried about the other one, but we're sure going to do everything we can to get you your hearing back. As your doctor, I would prefer if you stopped. <laughs> but I'm not gonna thank you. <laughs> and if you keep using Q-tips, you can just come in and see me more often. Huh? Yeah. Has this hurt at all? No. Okay, good. I'm pretty, pretty steady hand these days. I don't know in ten years if you keep. careful when trying to get that one off because I don't want to do any damage to your eardrums, especially since you seem to have a history of, um, of infection. Yeah, the irrigation is interesting. It can be a little uncomfortable too. It's what I normally do. We just take some warm water, some body temperature water, sometimes a little bit of oil or some kind of solution to break down the airway. And we spray it with moderate pressure into the ear, and it loosens up all that earwax. Yeah. Yeah, it can be a little messy. But, um, people who, who get infections more often in their ear, it's dangerous to do that because, because of the water. <clears throat> and I probably will when I'm with you here. I will probably give you some antibiotic eardrops. Just to, just do our best to not ruin your ear, right? Okay, let me look in here one more time. Okay, I think I got it. Can you tell if you can hear any better out of this ear? Yeah, a little bit? Good, good. Okay, let's take a look in the other one. Okay. Yeah, this one is quite a bit uh, worse impaction. But I still think... Well, here, let's see what I can do. all the nerve endings in your ear, what can easily feel really great, can feel pretty bad pretty fast. Yeah. Um, let's see, well obviously I stopped using Q-tips on my own ears when I became a doctor. <laughs> um, up until I was right out of high school I did it. Yeah. I just, you know, like when you get a bug bite, like a mosquito bite, especially on like your foot or something, and it itches so bad, and then you scratch it, and it just, it feels
feels so good it almost hurts. Yeah, that's about what it felt like when I don't think you to be my ears. And unfortunately, it's kind of something people seem to get addicted to. Especially because when you've been using Q-tips in your ears, it scratches and leaves tiny little uh, scratches in your ear that as they heal, they itch more. So you feel like you need to clean your ears more because it's itching more. So it's kind of like a cycle you need to break. Kind of like with smoking. Like the first two or three weeks just suck and all you really want to do is stick a Q-tip in your ear. <laughs> and then eventually your ears heal up and it starts to get easier. I don't think it's necessarily as bad for your health as smoking is, but it's not good for your ears at all, and it has the potential to do some serious damage. You know, not being able to hear people would be a crummy way to live your earlier life, right? It's a little closer. Well, the impact is a little bit uh, denser on the eardrum this time. And it's really so important that I just that I don't touch that eardrum. You went so as your earwax becomes impacted on your eardrum, it kind of hardens. It dries out and becomes more difficult to get at. Like some of the earwax you have in here right now is, is still wet and oily. It's kind of easy to scrape out. This has become dry and... Yeah. But I have a combination of tools here with the carrot and some forceps. I think I can get it out for you. I think you came in just in time. If you had used a couple more Q-tips, it could have been. Yeah, it could have been bad. No, I did have... Oh, uh, sorry about that. Okay. I got... How are you doing? Doing okay? Okay, you just let me know if we need to take a little break here. <sighs> let me take a look again. Okay. Yeah, I caught up. Not a big part of it. There's still some right against your eardrum there. So, we'll see if I can get it. It's all kind of hard. doing a really good job. Pretty much have to be like a deer in the headlights with this person here. Okay. Checking again. I bet your ears are 
fingers itch really bad. Yeah, well as I said, it's similar with Q-tips. What I'm doing is leaving small, small scrapes in your ears. Yeah. And they itch because they're trying to heal. And they are going to itch. And I'm going to need you to try and resist the urge to scratch them, okay? I'm going to put in the medicated eardrops after this, and that will, that will help with the itching just a little bit. Yeah. And you can use them. I'll send some home with you so for a couple days. Yeah. Also, they'll help, help soften any more wax that's left in there, anything I miss. Maybe help, help it fall out on its own, get your ear back to its regular. The ear is is a self-cleaning um, organ. It uh, you, you don't need to clean it; it does it on its own. It pushes the wax is what helps it be clean. You know, catches bacteria and dirt and stuff that goes into your ear, and the wax kind of takes it out, and falls out in little little clumps sometimes. As long as you're not messing with your ear. doing okay. I'm pretty sure I'm almost done. Maybe one more look in here. Looks pretty good. Got one more little piece. Give me just one second. I think I can get it with the four steps. Great. I think you are good to go. Yeah. Alright, that looks good. How's your hearing doing? Do you feel any different? Can you hear my voice a little better? Great. Great. And how's the itching? Is it pretty bad? Okay. Well, give me just one second. Let me go through my cupboard of eardrops here and see if I can find you one. I got the perfect ones right here, and you can take this home. This is a sample bottle, but it should be just enough to get you through. Okay, what I need you to do is lean your head over to the side. Very, very good. Okay, I'm just gonna put two drops, two drops per time, two times per day. sit and you need to let it kind of soak into your ear. Not really soak in, but you need to keep your head like this for about 30 seconds. Count it down together here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen.
put your head back normal. Okay. Now we're going to do the other side. Okay, go ahead and tilt your head. You know, it tickles a little bit. Okay, here we go. Alright, 30 seconds on this side too. Your head normal there. Inside there one last time. Okay, that looks great. And the other here. Okay, it looks much better. Alright, so I would like to see you again in six months to a year, depending on how well you take care of your ears. I prefer not to see any more Q-tip fibers in there, please. But if I do, that's fine. We'll just take care of it when you come back in. Alright, it was really great to see you again. Take good care of your ears for me, okay? Bye.